Hello everyone and welcome to the College Fairs of Greater Denver. We're very excited to have you participating in this event this evening. We have some very fantastic schools here with us today to present to you. My name is Clarissa and I'll be for your facilitator for this evening. Before we do get started, we do have a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphones are turned off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. There is a Q&A button on your screen where you can use to ask questions at any time to our presenters. If you do have a question for a specific school, please be sure to mention them within your question. This presentation is also being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash Greater Denver. This is also one of many sessions happening this evening. So after this hour, be sure to go back and see what else will be available. I'd like to now turn it over to our first presenter, which is Michigan State University. Awesome, thank you so much, Clarissa. Excited to share a little bit about Michigan State. Um, can you guys see my screen? I'm hoping. Um, awesome. Michigan State is a top 100 global university with top ranked academic programs and experiential learning opportunities all offered on one of the most conscious and culturally diverse campuses in the country. Um, I'm Aspen Arnold. I serve as the Regional Admissions Counselor um, for the state of Colorado and super excited to work with you all um, throughout the admissions process. Um, MSU is located in beautiful Michigan, which is a college town just a couple miles from the capital of Lansing um, and an hour and a half outside of Detroit. With our central location, you don't have to go far to visit Michigan's beaches, ski slopes, or metropolitan life and experience what we like to call pure Michigan. Our 5,000 acre park-like sits among countless restaurants and gardens, parks, and trails. Um, our mechanical gardens, art museums, performing arts venues, Big Ten athletics, recreation sports facilities, and even its own hotel. So really everything you need is on that centralized campus. At MSU, we really like to think that our size means access to big opportunities. There are almost 50,000 total students studying at MSU from all 50 states and over 140 different countries. First generation college students account for about 15% of this population. Um, and about 27% are comprised of students from outside of the state of Michigan, just like yourselves. MSU does have a culture of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, so we see almost 9,000 students of color at our university. We offer over 200 majors across 17 different degree granting colleges. I often see Colorado students are drawn to us for the Eli Broad College of Business, our College of Engineering, or our College of Natural Science and their associated pre-health programs. You'll also find this is home to a law school as well as three medical schools, including one of the top veterinary schools in the nation. That's not to say that we don't um, excel in other majors. Those are just where I see a lot of applicants from, uh, from Colorado looking. Whether you're completely undecided about your degree path or have comfortably already to major or even fall somewhere in between, um, we do think that MSU is a place where you can explore. Um, to me, what makes uh, MSU's academic program stand out is not the folks that we, fact that we have high ranking programs, which you see highlighted on the screen, um, but the fact that MSU provides students with the opportunity to create their own path that accommodates all of their interests. Um, we're truly a destination for students to explore and experiment experiment across different academic disciplines. There are many reasons to choose MSU um, besides our just our um, top ranked academic programs and diverse collaborative community. Here are just a few of them. MSU has been ranked in the top 25 for entrepreneurship opportunities by the Princeton Review. Our entrepreneurship and innovation minor is open to students of all different majors across the university um, and helps support students with um, experiential components such as financial and networking opportunities and creative maker spaces. Um, we're a tier one research institution, um, which means that it, um, we have an international record, uh, reputation for groundbreaking research. Um, all of our um, have the opportunity to collaborate with faculty um, so that you can learn in exciting and new ways um, at MSU. Lastly, we get quite a few questions about our study abroad program. Um, we're really proud to be ranked among the top U.S. institutions for education abroad, and we have been for the last 20 years. 
Thousands of Spartans engage in cultures different than their own every year and gain me meaningful skills that can position them for academic and professional success. You're also going to receive a Presidential Study Abroad Scholarship automatically um, if you're looking at MSU as an out-of-state student. I'm going to run through these quickly because I want to make sure we talk about our admissions requirements. But as a reminder, on a large university's campus, you're going to have plenty of opportunities to get involved. We have over 900 student organizations. Um, so there really is something for everyone, no matter what you're interested in. Um, of course, you may have heard of MSU based on our athletics. Um, we're home to one of the biggest recreation sports facilities um, in the nation, as well as one of the biggest um, intramural networks. Um, and of course, we're home to um, some Division I athletics, which maybe you've seen on TV. Our students are really successful, and I know that when you choose to go out of state, your family is making an uh, investment in your future. Um, so we find that MSU's, at MSU, a degree really does carry name recognition and prepares all of our students for a deep and broad knowledge that employers really value. All of our students are going to be automatically considered for scholarships when they apply to Michigan State. So there's separate scholarship application. And I just want to reiterate the importance of applying um, to MSU and um, realizing the lucrative scholarship opportunities. I know there's sometimes a misconception about going out of state to college, um, and I'm here to kind of debunk that myth that we really can be an affordable option for students. Um, we review students holistically to Michigan State. So you can apply to us and we will review you. Um, based on uh, your academic profile, your essay, um, as well as, um, again, with that, that academic profile, um, have you taken upper level courses? What was your senior schedule? Um, did you challenge yourself? We'll look at those um, in, in collaboration with your essay extracurricular involvement. Um, we have a November 1st early action deadline. So just remember that date. I think this is a great screen to take a screenshot of. Um, but we'd love to have you visit campus. I'm going to drop my information in the chat, so feel free to reach out with any additional questions you have about Michigan State. Go green. Thank you for your presentation, Michigan State. Up next, we have College for Creative Studies. Hi, thanks, Clarissa. Thanks for tuning in, everybody, tonight. I'm Olivia Isinga. I'm from the College for Creative Studies in Detroit, and I am going to share my screen with you and talk a little bit about CCS. So um, CCS, we're located in Detroit, Michigan, and uh, we were born, you could say, in, the, in 1906, and we have been originally known as a Society of Arts and um, Crafts, and we began offering degrees in the late 70s. So the notion of craft in, um, the, is the physical making of things with one's hands, but it's still vital to the core of our curriculums. So you're going to see our design-based majors working with their hands making things with their hands um, traditionally and not always just working with the computer. Um, the city itself, especially in the downtown and midtown areas of Detroit, um, we've gone some amazing transfer transformations and renovations in the past few years. And even though we're known as the Motor City, we've got a lot more um, comprised of the city than that. So you, have may, you may have heard of the Detroit Institute of Arts. Um, we're also home to Eastern Market, which is this beautiful historic um, area that has beautiful murals a lot of them have been done by CCS. Um, we also have um, a bike share program called MoGo and um, a lot of other really cool stuff going on within the city. So to introduce, um, to introduce CCS, I'd like to talk about what sets us apart. So that is size and our setting, our facilities, uh, some of the things about our majors and connections to the creative industries. We are private, we're a nonprofit institution, and we are fully accredited. So the degree that you would get if you went to CCS would be a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in one of our 11 different majors. And we also have a certification for our education if you are interested in teaching K through 12. The college enrolls um, more than 1,400 students. Actually, it's about more than 1,500 students at this point. And our class sizes are really small. So we like to keep it small. The student to faculty ratio is about nine to one. And we don't like doing large lectures here. Um, and this is one of the things that's going to differentiate us from uh, a state university, um, another college that has an art program. 
So like I said, we offer 11 BFA majors. We also offer emphases and minors in most of our majors as well. So you're not required to do a minor at CCS, but if, you, if that's something that you wanna do, if you're multi-passionate, you can totally do that. And we want our students to be well-rounded. So uh, we, we have our students to take about one third of the curriculum is liberal arts-based classes that do cater towards arts and design as topics. And the other two thirds will be your core studio classes. So the major that you're, fo or that you're, uh, the major that you're in are the classes that you are going to be taking two thirds of the time. And the great thing about, yeah, CCS is if you are multi-passionate, then you can totally take a minor. So some of the things that uh, set us apart, some of the awards that we've won, uh, we've been named one of the top three design schools in the US by LinkedIn. And so this is data that is coming from LinkedIn directly. Uh, LinkedIn has access to info about our alumni. So where are they working? How much money are they making? What are their job titles? Where, um, where in the US or around the world are they working now? We've also named, been named one of the best value schools by uh, Money Magazine and Payscale as well. And so that's talking about the return of investment. Uh, we're also proud of the fact that we are recognized as one of America's best uh, architecture and design schools. And that was uh, awarded by Design Intelligence. For those students who are interested in maybe transferring to CCS from a community college or another institution, uh, we were recognized as a transfer friendly school by Pi Theta Kappa and or Kappa and so that is something that to think about if you are interested in transferring to another school um, how transferable are your credits so you see the names of uh, companies here that we've all heard of places that might be a dream job some place that you want to work at um, these are places where our students are getting internships at not just in Detroit not just in Michigan but around the U.S. and around the world as well so our alumni network is super strong and our internships and recruitment events are a testament to that. So we have on campus recruiting events throughout the year or um, throughout the school years, we call these industry days. And these are where students often receive interviews and offers for internships and full-time uh, job offers too, right on campus. So our graduates, what are they doing? So they're managing studios and they're working at galleries, running their own galleries, creative and community spaces, and they're exhibiting and selling their work. And maybe if they're not a fine artist, maybe they're more in the design, um, um, the design realm, uh, they might be a concept designer, an automotive designer working for Ford, GM, FCA. Uh, they might be a fine artist, an interior designer, animator, things like that. So for those of you who are tuning in and maybe you are in your junior year of high school, maybe you're a little bit younger, uh, something that you might wanna look into are what kind of programs do that we have to offer for students in your age range. Uh, I highly recommend looking into our pre-college summer experience and that is uh, what that is. It's a three week long, uh, three credit program that you can do during the summer, live on campus, take classes with our faculty members, um, study, do, um, build your portfolio, get really um, good at the classes that you want to take, get a taste for what college life might be like at an art school, and um, create really cool work for your portfolio that you can use for admissions at CCS or elsewhere. And I don't have enough time to talk about the, um, the application process, but it is on our website. Uh, we do want to see your transcripts, your artwork, um, and um, pay attention to the deadlines too. Um, all college deadlines look a little bit different, so you want to pay attention to those when you're applying to schools. And I will put my information in the chat. If you want to email me, you can always um, reach out, and I am happy to help you. Thank you so much. Thank you, College of Creative Studies, for your presentation. Up next, we have Kalamazoo College. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. I'm so excited to talk a little bit about Kalamazoo. So I am going to share my screen. All right. So Kalamazoo College was founded in 1833. So we're old. We're one of the 100 oldest colleges and universities in the US. And we are a small liberal arts college located right in Kalamazoo, Michigan, with about 1,500 students. Uh, so our class size, the average class size here at K is 18. I'm a K alum, and I actually had, you know, I was used to having classes with about myself and six other students and the professor. So you get a lot of individualized attention 
session um, and you will definitely get to know your professor very well. And we are 30% domestic student of color and we are a division three. So we have 18 teams, nine men and nine women. And the two things that I know I don't have a lot of time. So the two things I really wanted to highlight was our location and our K plan. So like I said, we are located in the heart of downtown Kalamazoo in Michigan. We are literally smack dab in the middle of Chicago in Detroit. So two and a half hours from Detroit and two and a half hours from Chicago, which is really great. And the other thing I really like to highlight about the location is that like I said, we sit right in the downtown area of Kalamazoo. And so the Kalamazoo County area has about 265,000 people. And of those, about 30 to 40,000 actually are college students. So we also sit right across the street from a larger regional university, Western Michigan University. So we here at K like to jokingly say, we share the backyard to Western. So I like to kind of highlight that for the fact that if you're starting to look at small private liberal arts colleges, um, K is really unique in the fact that it sits in the city. So so I kind of like to say that you kind of get the best of both worlds. You get to kind of reap the benefits of being at a small private liberal arts college, but yet again, you're right across the street from a bigger university. So you kind of get the best of both worlds, as well as we are about 45 minutes away from Lake Michigan. So, which is lovely. Um, students in the spring, well, you'll always see students kind of piling into a car and heading to Lake Michigan in just 45 minutes to go spend a beautiful day at the beach. The next thing I like to highlight is our K plan. So this is the other thing that I just really think that makes Kalamazoo College really unique. And I like to talk about the K plan as it's a individualized education program designed specifically for you and really by you. Our president, Dr. Gonzalez likes to say, we have around 1500 students here on campus and we have 1500 different K plans all happening at once. So I'm a K alum. And if you came to K, your K plan would look vastly different than myself. You'd be sitting in classrooms and meeting new friends and, and kind of meeting everyone on campus and they're all going to have really different K plans happening because it's based on what you are interested in, what you're passionate about and how you learn the best. So you can kind of think about the K plan as it's broken up into four different parts um, and you can even break that down further and kind of think about it as each year that you're here on campus. So the first part of your K plan is our open flexible curriculum. So here at Kalamazoo College, we do not have general education requirements. Um, you're probably, if you're in high school right now, you're probably kind of used to that checklist that you get. You know, these are the classes that you have to take in this order. Here at K, we like to say that we don't give you a checklist, we give you a blank piece of paper. Now we do have graduation requirements, but even after the graduation requirements, it leaves over 50% of the curriculum completely up to you. So you really, really, truly are in the driver's seat of how you want your curriculum to look here at K. And the nice thing is here at Kalamazoo College, you do not have to declare your major until winter term of your sophomore year. So this, with having this open, flexible curriculum, it really helps, it fits really well for both types of students. So if you're sitting there thinking, one, I have like no idea what I want to do yet. Um, you know, I just, I'm not sure which one is completely normal. And I would say the majority of students who come to K without having that kind of list of general education requirements that you have to take, you literally then have your first year to explore because you don't have to declare your major until winter term of your sophomore year. Um, but on the flip side, if you're, you know, kind of thinking, well, that doesn't really describe me. I really kind of know what I want to do. Um, you get to then kind of jump right into that again, without having that list of general education education requirements, you get to kind of dive into that department and really see if that's really what you want to do. The second part of your K plan is going to be our study abroad program. Um, this is something that is so built into the culture here at K and the history. We've been doing it since the early 60s. Um, it's something we're really, really proud of. And the things I just like to briefly highlight on the study abroad program is one, the length of time. So our study abroad program roughly equates to three, six or nine months. So the shortest being three months and the longest being nine months. So you will definitely be gone long enough to really get immersed in the culture and your program program and even have a little time to travel around. Um, so it's definitely not just a couple of weeks and you're off campus. You are definitely off for a very um, substantial amount of time wherever you choose. And we have about over 60 programs at this point. Um, the other thing I like to highlight with the study abroad program is that all of your merit-based and financial aid will transfer with you as well. And you will be able to do study abroad within four years. 
So there's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. The study abroad program is built into the four years of your program. The third part of your K plan is um, what we kind of call hands-on education. So really getting you guys outside of the classroom and getting your, you know, kind of your hands-on real life experience. And again, tying back to our location, being in the city of Kalamazoo, um, you have a lot of that right at your fingertips. So this can be civic engagement or um, take the look of an internship. A lot of this also will be built into a lot of your courses. Um, so the nice thing about that sometimes is it takes the legwork. Um, the last part of your study brought your K plan that I'd love to talk about is your senior individualized project, which this is graduate master's level work that you are required to do as a senior. All all K graduates are. So that's your K plan. You really get to be in the driver's seat of your experience in your four years here at K. So I will definitely leave my information in the chat box. And I'm actually coming to Colorado um, for a couple of days at the end of the month. So if you'd like to meet and have coffee, definitely reach out. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kalamazoo, for that wonderful presentation. As a reminder to our participants, if you guys have questions for any of the institutions you are hearing from today, definitely don't hesitate to drop those into the Q&A down below. Up next, we have University of Michigan Stamps School of Art and Design. Yes. Hello, everyone. Excited to talk to you today. My name is Natalie Deal, and I'm an admissions counselor at the Stamps School of Art and Design. I'm also joined by my, by my colleague, Rita Lee, another counselor who will be here to answer some of your questions in the chat. And yeah, we're happy to talk to you today about our art and design school within the University of Michigan. So without further ado. At Stamps, our curriculum is unique because we have one major, art and design. Within that major, our Stamps students have the opportunity to explore their creative studio work and academic interests in whatever combination works for their individual practice. Stamps offers both a Bachelor of Fine Arts, or BFA, and a Bachelor of Arts, or BA, in Art and Design. The primary difference between these two degrees is the balance between academic and studio coursework, with the BFA being more studio heavy and the BA being more academics heavy. The first year at Stamps for both of these programs is identical. In addition to our Art and Design curriculum, we offer a joint degree program with the School of Music, Theater, and Dance. Inter Arts Performance is the perfect program for students who have interest in both the visual arts and theater, as well as a desire to create original performance pieces. When aspiring artists and designers are given the opportunity to step outside of a familiar environment and observe another culture, it can foster creative insights, encourage independence, and prepare students to understand difference and adapt to unfamiliar situations. The Stamp School of Art and Design International Experience is designed to prepare students to thrive in culturally diverse settings as they bring their art and design practices out into the world. The University of Michigan is a tier one public research university. This means that University of Michigan faculty, our professors, are actively researching in their respective fields. This includes professors teaching at the Stamp School of Art and Design. In our school, we define creative practice as research. This may be a painting practice, a performance art practice, or even collaborations with industry to design a product for market. Something we want to emphasize about the Stamp School of Art and Design is that we offer a small art and design school experience within the larger institution of the University of Michigan. We're a close-knit community of about 600 students, and in addition to the smaller, more personal Stamps community, you'll have access to the larger University of Michigan, with over 45,000 students on campus and 275 degree programs. You get to enjoy all of the resources and experiences that come with the large public research institution, while also enjoying the smaller art and design school experience. Stamps alumni have applied their creativity to the workforce in diverse ways. These are just a few of the companies where we have alumni working after graduation. In previous years, over 90% of Stamps graduates are either employed in a creative field or are in graduate school within six months of graduation. Stamps has graduated students who have went on to become entrepreneurs, inventors, company founders, and CEOs. We value career development at Stamps. Our advising team works to provide professional development opportunities for our students through programs such as career boot camps, portfolio expo, 
workshops, and one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. So you may be asking yourself, how do I get into stamps? What's the application process like? All stamps applicants submit their academic materials through the Common App or the Coalition App and their creative work through a slide room link. The University of Michigan Office of Undergraduate Admissions receives your application materials and sends them on to the STAMP School Admissions team for review. When we review your application, we take your academic materials and creative work into account equally. STAMPS does not consider academic standardized test scores in our review process. A critical piece of your application, aside from your portfolio of creative work, which is worth 50% of your decision, is your written response to the last essay question, which asks you to describe the unique qualities that attract you to the specific undergraduate college or school to which you are applying at the University of Michigan. How would that curriculum support your interests? We encourage you to write in your unique, authentic voice when responding to this prompt. Now it's time to apply. First, we want to note that all STAM students enter in the BFA or Bachelor of Fine Arts program. And then after your first year, you can choose to switch to the BA. But know that when you complete your application, the BFA will be the only option. Our early action deadline for first year students for the BFA in Art and Design, as well as the BFA in Inner Arts Performance, is November 1st. Our regular decision deadline for first year and all transfer students is February 1st. We always encourage first year students to aim for the early action deadline. With early action, you're able to establish an early connection with the admissions office, you get your decision back sooner, and you have more time to consider your college choice and make plans. If you have any questions about the information that was shared today or anything else that you'd like to get in touch about, feel free to contact us at stamps-admissions at umich.edu and you'll reach our entire admissions team. One of us will get back to you as soon as we can. Please keep in touch. All right. So thank you for uh, listening about our program and our curriculum. And we'll be in the chat and share our contact info. Thank you, Stamps, for that creative presentation. <clears throat> Excuse me. Up next, we have Augsburg University. Awesome. Well, hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. Um, my name is Josh Owens. My pronouns are he, him, his. I work for Augsburg University, and we're located in uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota. A little bit about Minneapolis. Um, it's a great place to live, great place to be a student. Um, some highlights, just, uh, just kind of give you an idea. We have six major professional sports teams, hockey, football, men's and women's basketball, soccer, baseball, all of those um, sports arenas are either located in Minneapolis or right across the river in St. Paul. So great opportunities for um, students to go and see uh, professional sports. We Minneapolis has the number one park system in the country. Um, one of those parks is actually located in the center of Augsburg's campus. We're also the number one bike friendly city in the country. Um, and in the lower right hand corner, you see a map of what's called the Grand Rounds National Scenic Highway. It's a 52 mile um, bike trail uh, that encircles the entirety of Minneapolis. Uh, um, and then the other kind of unique thing about Minneapolis is we rank third um, on the list of best places for live theater in America. So a lot of great things to do in Minneapolis and our Augsburg students take advantage of all of those things. So taking a look kind of where we're located, Minneapolis in your upper left-hand corner, St. Paul in your upper right-hand corner, and then the lines on there are um, the light rail trains uh, that run from Minneapolis to downtown St. Paul. And then also from Minneapolis to uh, the MSP, Minneapolis St. Paul International Airport and um, the Mall of America. And Augsburg is located right in the middle where those two split uh, just to the east of downtown Minneapolis. And all of our Augsburg students get a free Metro pass. Um, so you can utilize the buses, the trains, absolutely free. A lot of great ways to get around um, and utilize and take advantage of all the really awesome things that uh, Minneapolis and St. Paul have to offer. A little bit of a close up here. Um, we are within three stops or a couple of blocks of three stops on the light rail, um, light rail train lines. If you're interested, feel free to take a look at our campus. Um, we do have a, a, a virtual campus tour on our website. Um, feel free to, to jump in. I'll drop this link in the chat um, at the end of this presentation.
So some quick facts about us. Uh, we are actually in the Cedar Riverside neighborhood, which is um, one of the most diverse zip codes in the US. And we consider ourselves an anchor institution. So we focus a lot on creatively using our institutional resources to contribute to the health and vitality of the neighborhoods that we call home. Um, we're a private institution and we focus on the liberal arts. So in addition to the classes that you'll be majoring uh, or that will you'll take for your major, you'll also take classes in the fine arts, in the humanities, in the sciences, and we focus a lot on helping you really just, you know, figure out and dive into your vocation. What are you excited about? What are you passionate about? Where do those different things come from? Um, and then how can we help point you in the right direction from there? We're a little bit smaller institution, about 2,200 undergraduate students. Average class size for us sits at about 15, and um, about half of our student population lives on campus at any one time. Being an Augsburg student, we are the most diverse private institution in Minnesota. About 56% of our students um, consider themselves students of color. We are within the top 30 for LGBTQIA plus friendly institutions in the country. We are ELCA Lutheran affiliated. About 15% of our students consider themselves of the Lutheran faith. About a third of our incoming fall class each year are transfer students. So joining us from another four-year institution, from a two-year institution, we have a step up program, which is a program for students um, recovering from drug and alcohol addiction. So a lot of community and uh, programming that's built into that. We focus a lot on neurodiversity through our class office. So our center for learning and accessible student services. And we have a, a, a unique multicultural student services office in, in that we have five different directors built into that office. So the American Indian Student Services Office, Latinx Student Services, Pan-African Center, Pan-Asian Student Services, and our LGBTQIA plus student services office. In addition to um, a lot of other different programs, I mentioned that we have 50 plus different majors. These are some of our more unique ones. Uh, we have a space physics program. Um, where we were a founding member of the Minnesota Space Grant College Consortium. We have both undergraduate and graduate music therapy programs. We have a brand new public church scholars program, which is a three plus two program. It gets you a bachelor's degree with us and then a master's degree of divinity at the Lutheran School of Theology at Chicago. And we recently launched a critical race and ethnic studies um, degree, which is built into our uh, graduation requirements, um, was also launched in conjunction with our Justice for George Floyd initiatives. One of our unique um, kind of signature programs that we do is called the Augsburg Experience. So all of our students, by the time they graduate, will have done an internship. Um, we have 16 different Fortune 500 companies in Minneapolis and St. Paul that we have a lot of connections with. Students can study abroad or study away. Uh, 300 different places to go and, and programs to do through study abroad and study away, including three of our, um, our own Augsburg satellite campuses in Namibia, El Salvador, and Cuernavaca, Mexico. Um, students can do undergraduate research or they can do a semester long volunteer opportunity as well to uh, complete that Augsburg experience requirement. In terms of the admission process, as we're getting kind of to the end here, we have our own Augsburg application. We're also a member of the common application. The other biggest thing that we're gonna need is your high school transcript. Letters of recommendation are optional and we're a test-free institution. So we don't utilize ACT or SAT for um, admission or for scholarships. Take a very holistic approach. So we're gonna look at everything on your application. Cost for us is gonna be a little bit higher, about $52,000 per year if you choose to live on campus but a lot of different scholarships that we offer as well. Um, 20 to $28,000 per year and a $2,000 early Augie scholarship if you apply prior to December 1st. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. I'll drop all this info in the chat. Thanks everyone. Uh, thank you Augsburg for that presentation. Our final institution for this session is Hamline University. Great, thank you so much. Welcome everyone. I'll go ahead and share my screen just like everyone else has, and we'll go ahead and get started. All right, so my name is Jen Olson Kringle, and I serve as the Director of Undergraduate Admission at Hamlin University. We are located in St. Paul, Minnesota, actually just across the river from Augsburg University. Um, we are in an urban uh, neighborhood about halfway between downtown Minneapolis and downtown St. Paul. Um, Minneapolis and St. Paul, also known as the Twin Cities. So we'll talk a bit um, about what that means to be here in the Twin Cities. We're a private liberal arts university, uh, and we enroll just under 2,000 undergraduate students. 
and our students tend to represent a variety of states and countries right now. We have 37 states represented as well as 42 different countries. We enroll an incoming class of around 450 to 475 new first year students each year. And our overall student body includes 42% uh, uh, first generation students, so first in their family to attend a bachelor's degree institution. And uh, about 39% of our students identify uh, as students of color. Similar to some of the other colleges you've heard about, um, because we're small, our class sizes are small. Most of our classes are discussion-based and not lecture style. Small class sizes means that you have a strong connection with your faculty. Our student to faculty ratio is 13 to one with professors who really get to know their students and want to see them succeed. We're also a division three institution with 20 varsity athletic teams, as well as a number of intramural and club sport options. We compete in the Minnesota Intercollegiate Athletic Conference with other small colleges here in Minnesota, including Augsburg. There are four key values that reflect the Hamlin community that I'd like to share with you today. First, uh, Hamlin is committed to social justice and civic engagement. This has been uh, a, a big piece of who we are as an institution. With our location in the urban setting of the Twin Cities uh, and uh, Minneapolis's capital, or Minnesota's capital city, we strive to prepare students to be engaged members of their communities and of society. So this includes activities like service work and advocacy. Um, it also includes things like voting. In 2018, Hamlin had the overall highest voting rate at a private four-year institution in the United States uh, and the overall highest uh, undergraduate voting rate at a private four-year institution. The Wesley Center for Spirituality Service and Social Justice provides the support for this initiative, as well as many others around community service and engagement. Second, Hamlin is committed to a holistic learning environment. Through our flexible curriculum, known as the Hamlin Plan, students explore courses across all areas of study, uh, as well as focusing on a particular major, um, with the hope of learning skills, knowledge, and abilities necessary to be competitive in today's job market. In addition, our small size allows for many opportunities to be involved in collaborative research with faculty members and with student colleagues. Third, Hamlin strives to be a diverse and inclusive learning environment. Uh, this work is supported and led by our president, by our Office of Inclusive Excellence, and by the Hedgeman Center for Student Diversity Initiatives and Programs. We believe that our excess in this area really depends on all of our efforts to cultivate and practice inclusivity, embrace diversity, and uphold equity. And finally, Hamlin promotes uh, real world learning experiences. So our faculty are committed to supporting students as they become practitioners in their field of study. All students are required to do some sort of experiential learning opportunity. This could be an internship, this could be a study abroad program, um, for education majors, this is their student experience, student teaching experience, um, in addition to potentially some undergraduate research. All of our, uh, all of these uh, are um, supported by the fact that we're in a great location for internships uh, and opportunities for engagement. Our students uh, are interested in a lot of different things. Um, we offer over 80 different student organizations. Um, 50 different areas of study. Here's a, a, a look at those uh, areas of study. Some of our more popular majors include business, biology, criminology, and criminal justice, legal studies, and psychology and education. Uh, and just this past year, we launched a new program in forensic psychology. Uh, so something that a lot of students are interested in. Finally, I wanted to just share a little bit of perspective on costs and financial aid. Here you'll see our, co our cost of attendance, uh, as well as our average financial aid package for students who have shown financial need. Over 90% uh, of new Hamlin students will receive some sort of Hamlin gift aid. So you'll see our scholarships there, those top two groups, the academic scholarships and those other awards, those are awarded based on the information you provide in your application. So those do not require a separate application um, for a scholarship consideration. You'll hear about those um, when you hear about your admission decision. And then we also have a number of departmental scholarships for students um, who are interested in those particular noted areas. Those do require a separate application. Um, all of these applications are available on our website. Uh, standardized tests are not required. We're a test optional institution. So admission and scholarship decisions are made 
based on your high school transcript and your application materials. So I hope this has been a helpful uh, um, informational uh, session for you. Here's my contact information. I'll also drop that in the chat for you. Uh, but thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, we really appreciate it. Thank you. All right, and that comes to the end of our programming this evening. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. When you do close this window, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey and we would appreciate any feedback you can provide to us. We also encourage you to go back and check the schedule and sign up for more sessions. There are two more hours right after this. And you will also be able to find this session's recording as well as any other session recordings at strivescan.com slash greater Denver. Again, thank you all for joining us and have a great evening.